I'm gonna try to get two streets further because here's a lot of traffic still. Okay. <laughs> Beard in the wind. Yeah. <laughs> It's exactly why I grew it. Just that feeling of the wind. <laughs> oh, it makes me feel like a free woman. <laughs> Let's start. Okay. Um, so yeah, so the first question is kind of obvious, but uh, so how are you today and how's the, how's the situation in Belgium? Well, today I'm good. It kind of depends on the day. Uh, there's uh, days where the loneliness is getting very difficult, uh, but today is a very good day. I feel happy. Uh, the situation in okay. Belgium is uh, pretty strange. Uh, the rules are quite strict except when it comes to spending and earning money. Uh, you can go to shops, uh, you can go to your job, but you're not allowed to have fun. Uh, you cannot go to bars, you cannot go to concerts. Uh, the rules are also very complex here uh, because you're allowed to meet with four people, but there are a lot of rules about who those four people can and cannot be. Even our, uh, our Minister of Health was confused by our own rules. So uh, that's the situation we're in right now. Yeah, okay. Well, this is pretty much the same as in France, I guess, so. Um, okay. Um, so, let's talk more about music, because that's why we are here. Um, you recently published a first album with your band Sons of Sirius. Um, that's correct. How do, how do you deal with uh, the advertising process in such a, such a tough situation? I mean, it, it, it's, uh, I guess it's not very easy to uh, advertise the, the, the album uh, with the fact that you cannot tour or make uh, gigs and shows. So how do you how do? You do? Well, it's, uh, it was our first album, so... To be honest, we had no idea how to promote it, but especially the fact that we cannot play live right now uh, forced us to become quite creative. We expected to like go out and play and sell albums to people wherever we came, but now uh, we more or less use the album to promote our, uh, ourselves instead of promo uh, use ourselves to promote the album. Uh, so we tried getting on a few radio stations. Uh, we contacted a few very nice uh, Spotify playlists that uh, put us onto their uh, list. And uh, yeah, apart from that, we started the blog. We started uh, using Facebook uh, and Instagram more intensively to promote our uh, album. To be honest, before the crisis, we didn't even have an Instagram. It was purely because of the crisis and because we had to promote ourselves a little bit extra now that we create an Instagram. Okay. So the Instagram is very new. <laughs> okay. And uh, so you so do you have physical copies and uh, and uh, um, digital copies? Uh, at this moment, just because of the Corona crisis, uh, we have kind of postponed the physical release, but we do have uh, the digital release. So it's available on uh, Amazon Music. It's available on uh, iTunes. And on the, of course, on the free streaming platforms as well. Uh, but at this moment, we're more or less focused on the streaming because, yeah. yeah, if you can't promote it live, not a lot of people maybe feel like buying a CD. And now we just want to get our music out to as many people as possible. So that is why we mostly promote our uh, Spotify at the moment. Okay. Okay. So you are waiting better time. To, uh, to release the, the physical uh, copy. Exactly. We hope maybe okay. by uh, June or July we can start playing in the streets, busking, maybe organize a few small gigs ourselves, and by then we hope to have a physical release. Okay. I see. Well, I wish you best of luck, and uh, I hope you will be able to release the, the, physical, uh, the physical Ardenia, because this is the name of the album, right? Indeed. <laughs> so I hope you will be able to physically release Ardenia very soon. And I am waiting for my own physical copy too. <laughs> All right, I will send one your way and then uh, I will be looking 
onward to get my uh, album of uh, Le Garçon de l'Automne as well. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so I have another question, question, which is about the folk musician crisis collective, because yes. you're a member of this collective. Yep. Um, you are kind of very active in, among this community with a lot of ideas like you you made some uh, you are making some uh, kind of videos with your band uh, you are planning on a kind of quarantine version of the elder i think it's the name of the track that's correct and uh, you also made some interviews of different people and uh, so Uh, why is it so important to you and how do you get the ideas of making so much things for the full community? Well, at this moment, I don't have uh, a lot of work to do. I'm a part-time teacher, but only for like six hours a week. Uh, okay. Most of my money actually comes from either music or doing guided tours. But with those both now gone, uh, I had a lot of time to think, a lot of time to... Uh, to plan uh, just a lot of time to yeah do random stuff and i realized that in all those years i've been playing music i never really focused on getting to know the other musicians uh, building a network uh, learning from other people so now i thought you know what if i interview people i give them a chance to reach out to new audience and i also get a chance to get to know them learn from them and uh, see how they do stuff in uh, their own special kind of way so that way i've got to uh, i've got to know a lot of cool lovely people including you uh thank you <laughs> so, uh, i think in that optic uh, the interviews uh, were a really big success uh, i've made a lot of new friends uh, learned a lot of new ways of doing stuff in the music business so uh, i'm happy i did that and uh, i hope the other musicians will also benefit from uh, from the interviews. Yeah, so uh, today we are swapping places and the interviewer is being interviewed and the, the guy interviewed is being the interviewer. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit in need of a mix up now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I was talking about the fact that you were preparing a quarantine version of one of the track of your first album. Um, <laughs> With so uh, uh, I understood there was going to be a choir. Indeed. So uh, we're just uh, allowing fans and uh, other musicians to participate uh, by singing. But uh, in the meantime, we've also received a few people playing their instruments, like uh, you on the hurdy gurdy. So uh, yeah, maybe it's it's more becoming uh, instead of a choir, it's also becoming like a big band. Okay. And. Whoop. <laughs> Sorry, tricky part. <laughs> and so you are going to get all the videos from all those musicians and people and make a, a big edited video with every, with every part. Is that it? Yes, indeed. So I'm just going to put them all together, mix the sound a little bit. And then uh, I'm not sure where exactly I'm going to put it in the song. I thought it might be like a really nice intro, but it also could be like a really big point for the bridge to use the choir. So... I'll see what I get, and then I'll try to make something nice with it. Okay, that's cool. And uh, do you have any other ideas like that? Uh, at this moment, we're uh, trying to also start up uh, an uh, online festival. So just get a lot of musicians to send in videos, uh, find some people who want to present the bands, people who otherwise present real festivals. And then we're just going to put the, uh, the huge video in a live session online, So people can chat with musicians, they can chat with each other, almost like we're really together, but not really together. Yeah, that's really cool. And so how are you going to manage that? In which platform, like maybe Discord, or is it a Facebook Live or something else? I think it will probably be a Facebook Live. I think that's the platform that most of, uh, of the musicians uh, are most familiar with uh, and also our audiences usually follow our Facebook pages so I think that's uh, the easiest way to reach out to them yeah okay I see and uh, okay so it will it will happen in the coming months or yeah. weeks maybe yeah uh, so if there's any musician watching uh, I'd love to receive the videos around end of May 
and I hope to broadcast the festival uh, somewhere between the mid and the end of June. Okay, cool. Well, uh, I think we are. Uh, I am really looking forward to it, and I think many folk musicians will be very happy to uh, to participate or at least to to be there. And I hope it will be a way to kind of reunite with uh, all the people that we can't meet this summer. <laughs> yeah, I hope, hope so as well. I think connection is the most important part of playing music. Without connection, you're play, you might as well just go and play on a graveyard. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. And festivals in summer are, are always a good opportunity to reunite with some friends that you haven't seen since the last summer. Exactly. So, uh, Maybe people, uh, I, I mean, many people we are not uh, getting to, to, to meet this summer. And so that could be a, a good occasion to, uh, to be with them, even if it's on remote. Yeah, I, recently I was on a, an online singing evening. A lot of people just sent in videos, the lyrics appeared on screen, and you were supposed to like sit at home, watch the video, sing along. And you could also chat on Facebook uh, with each other uh, because it was a live event. And despite, I, at first I thought this is really weird, but there was such a feeling of connection at the moment. So I think those things will be very important now. Okay, that's cool. I'm really looking forward to it. And I have one last question as we are talking about festivals and uh, organization like this. This is a, a tricky question and I'm sorry for it. But uh, I ask this to everybody uh, in the Walk and Talk uh, episodes. Um, according to you, what will be the impact of this epidemic on the, on the music and folk music industry and festivals, organization, uh, organizers and uh, new rules, etc.? What Do you think it's getting to be difficult to organize big festivals like that? Uh, that might indeed be difficult for a few more years uh, here in Belgium. They're saying no more big events until we have a working vaccine. So that's, of course, going to make a lot of difference, I guess, in uh, how easy or difficult it will be to continue with the big festivals. Uh, on the other hand, I think because of this virus, of what's happening right now, streaming will get even more important. Uh, streaming was already growing more and more important. It was more difficult and more difficult to get good live gigs so i think especially now streaming is going going to go through the roof uh in that optic we have a, we've had a lot of luck to release our album right now now that a lot of people are bored and need stuff to do online uh to remain busy uh other yeah. than that i think in terms of festivals with a lot of big festivals being closed right now It might be a good window of opportunity for the smaller events. Uh, people who do something small in their village uh, or something regional, they might now have very good events uh, with a lot of people, local people showing up. Because in the past, we've been playing regularly at small events where nobody showed up because it was a big festival somewhere in Belgium uh, mm -hmm. and people prefer to go there. So maybe for those people thing now, Uh, but I do hope that the big festivals can return, will return, uh, won't have too many financial uh, issues right now, uh, because it would be a shame without the, all those great festivals, there would be simply no work for us. There would be no great places to come together, uh, because there's that special atmosphere at the big festival that you simply cannot have at a small one. Yeah. Okay, so it's... Uh... It can be a boon and a bane, and that's what you're saying. It, it, it will depend on what we are going to do with it and uh, how we are going to uh, kind of, uh, uh, I mean, everything we can try to rebuild from, from the ground. Exactly. It's basically what's hap what happens now is up to us, the musicians, how will we react, what are we going to do, uh, and it's also up to the audience, what will they do, after this all passes will they remain afraid will they just go super social and try to go everywhere uh, so it's going to depend a lot on the people yeah i see okay and uh well i hope we are all crossing fingers for things to uh get back to well as normal as possible very I, soon indeed
Yeah. And well, so that was my last question. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. It was uh, I was very happy to see you and uh, receive your invitation. Yeah, me too. It was a pleasure. And I hope we'll be able to, to meet at one festival, uh, well, quite soon, as soon as possible. Indeed. And I'll uh, make sure there will be alcohol. Yeah, <laughs> and drink uh, one, one, uh, one beer or maybe two or maybe more. <laughs> Five. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Kamba. And, uh, and uh, good luck, uh, good luck with uh, Sons of Sirius and with the the album Ardenia. Thank you. Uh, good and, luck. and I hope you'll be able to release it uh, physically very soon, because I really want to have my physical copy of this uh, of this I album. <laughs> I also love physical releases the most, so uh, we'll keep in touch. I'm sure of that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good afternoon. You too. Enjoy. Goodbye. Bye.